Welcome everybody. This is the biochemistry recording for FMG CBT2. There are total 15 questions and I'll be discussing them one by one. The very first question is talking to you about the formation of deoxy TMP from deoxy UMP. So whenever we are talking about the formation of deoxy TMP, we need to have methylation of this uracil moiety. And that methyl group is donated by N5 and 10 methylene tetrahydrofolic acid which is converted to dihydrofolic acid. And the name of enzyme is thymidylate synthase. Thymidylate synthase enzyme. So, the donor of methyl group in this reaction is going to be N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolic acid. Coming to next question, which of the following is the example uh, of reverse transcriptase enzyme? Reverse transcriptase means RNA to DNA formation and this activity is seen in telomerase enzyme. Telomerase is the enzyme which is having a RNA thread in it. This is the RNA thread in it and the protein body of telomerase is having reverse transcriptase activity. Reverse transcriptase activity which is capable of reading the sequence of RNA and making the DNA opposite to it. This is the DNA which is produced against this RNA and this DNA is nothing but it's a telomere which is produced by this telomerase enzyme. So telomerase is the answer. Gyrase, helicase and uh, has got nothing to do with the reverse transcription and calcium ion of course is not an enzyme. Insulin causes lipogenesis by all except. So for knowing this you must know. For uh, solving this question, first of all, you must know that insulin is very important for making of fatty acid, for making of cholesterol. It needs to have a lot of acetyl CoA, which must produce from pyruvate in presence of PDH complex activity. So, whenever insulin is there, PDH complex first enzyme is dephosphorylated and PDH is active. So, insulin is going to activate PDH so that the supply of acetyl CoA is maintained, which is going for lipogenesis, the synthesis of fatty acid and cholesterol. And uh, additionally, when the fatty acid need to be produced, this acetyl CoA is converted to melonyl CoA in presence of one enzyme called carboxylase enzyme, that is acetyl CoA carboxylase enzyme. This is the rate limiting enzyme for fatty acid synthesis and insulin is going to activate it via dephosphorylation. So these are little bit small stories around the lipogenic role of the insulin. Now let's see the question what it is. Insulin causes lipogenesis by all except. So the answer is going to be C. It doesn't inhibit PDH. As I said that insulin is going to activate PDH complex by activating the very first enzyme PDH which is going to be active in dephosphorylated form. Right. And all other statements are uh, sort of the related with the insulin that it increases type of carboxylase activity, it increases the transportation of glucose in the cell, it decreases the cyclic AMP level and that is the reason there is a dephosphorylation of certain enzymes. Style coic carboxylase is one of them. Now coming to next question in this paper which is talking to you about which of the following activities are low in riboflavin deficiency. If there is a deficiency of B2, then which enzyme activity will be deficient? Transketolase needs B1 enzyme. Glycogen phosphorylase needs B6 vitamin. Sorry, vitamin. Transketolase needs vitamin B1. Phosphorylase needs vitamin B6. Propionyl CoA carboxylase needs uh, uh, B7 because all carboxylases needs biotin that is B7. Glutathione reductase is the one which is needing B2. So in low B2 level, the glutathione reductase activity will be uh, adversely affected. Coming to fifth question, what is expected after cholecystectomy? So cholecystectomy where gallbladder is removed. The gallbladder is the storehouse for the bile which is, uh, which is going to contract during fatty meal intake and the bile is going to reach the duodenum. So that is how the arrangement is there in our system. So if the cholecystectomy is there where the gallbladder is removed, of course the bile which is produced by the liver is directly going to, going to the intestine irrespective of the meal. So suddenly when the person is taking fatty meal, maybe that, that particular time the bile is not available. And you know the bile contain a very important thing and that is the bile salt which is helping in the lipid digestion and absorption. So in cholecystectomy, 
cholecystectomy patients cholecystectomy patients what happens the uh, timely bile salt is not being provided for lipid digestion and absorption and hence what happens in the GIT lumen lot of lipids are accumulated they are not digested and absorbed and so a lot of bacteria are going to act on these lipids and, uh, and at times the fatty acid and triacylglycerol are going to come in the stool in the intact form giving the frothy and uh, voluminous stool and that's called stetoria stetoria so in cholecystectomy patient this is the problem and so they learn to avoid the fatty meal so it's a stetoria okay now coming to cholesterol just now i was telling that insulin is responsible for lipogenesis for making of fatty acid for making of cholesterol so whether it is fatty acid or it is cholesterol the precursor molecule is going to be acetyl coe that you must know so cholesterol is synthesized from acetyl coe Coming to question number seven, minky disease, it's a very important question. Minky disease is uh, the condition where the GIT mucosa is not having a transporter protein which can absorb copper. See, copper we consume, it goes to GIT mucosa, but from the GIT mucosa to the blood vessels, the copper must come via one transporter at the basolateral membrane of GIT mucosa. This transporter is known as, listen carefully, it is called copper binding ATPase 7A. Remember, this is a copper binding ATPase 7A, the transporter protein which is present at basolateral membrane of GIT mucosa and this uh, protein is responsible for copper uh, transportation from the GIT mucosa to the blood vessel. In Minky disease, this is the transporter which is going to be mutated so copper will be there in the lumen it will be absorbed in the mucosa but beyond that it cannot enter the blood vessel so a lot of copper deposition will be there in the git mucosa of such children and this disease where this is mutated and copper is not absorbed resulting in lack of copper in the circulation is known as minky disease minky kinky steely hair syndrome and this is due to copper binding ATP 7A mutation. So what happens in the blood vessels, the copper is deficient and all the enzymes which need copper for their action like cytochromes, tyrosinase and number of enzymes are there, celluloplasmin formation, it's all not taking place and that is a copper deficiency. Coming to question number 8, patient presenting with the diarrhea, dementia and dermatitis. This is a classical presentation of pellagra. There are multiple reasons of pellagra. The classic pellagra is due to niacin deficiency that is vitamin B3 deficiency. So this is a characteristic feature of pellagra. Coming to question number 9, the micronutrient which is deficient after ileal resection. So, ileum is the site where vitamin B12 is absorbed. Vitamin B12 is called extrinsic factor because it needs intrinsic factor for absorption. So, vitamin B12 and intrinsic factor, they are good friends. They make complex and that is being absorbed through ileum. So, in case of ileal resection, what happens? There will be deficiency of vitamin B12. At the same time, along with this question, you must know that at times the intrinsic factor is not secreted due to parietal cell damage due to autoimmune disorder and that time again the B12 is not absorbed and that is known as pernicious anemia. It's an autoimmune disorder where autoantibodies are there against the parietal cell, not allowing the intrinsic factor to get secreted. Coming to next question, number 10. Fat sugar baby, fat sugar baby, it is the characteristic uh, uh, term given to patients of Kwasharkar. Kwasharkar. Which is one of the protein energy malnutrition where you have the sufficient supply of carbohydrate that is carbohydrate is a surplus and protein is very very 
low protein is very low. protein is low so what happens a lot of edema all over the body so that is why baby looks fat and carbohydrate is uh, sufficient energy consumption is there but uh, calories baby is taking but baby is not consuming protein so baby is going to present with washerkar in marasmus there will be lack of both protein as well as in carbohydrate intake Coming to next question number 11, which of the following shifts the curve to the left? So this, they are talking about oxygen dissociation curve. And you can see this picture, which is uh, self-explanatory. This is the partial pressure of oxygen on the x-axis. And this is saturation of hemoglobin with the oxygen on y-axis. The oxygen dissociation curve, OBC, looks like this. It's a curvy line. And when we talk about the shift to the right, shift to the left, we mean to say that shift to the right means this dissociation curve will be like this. Shift to the left means dissociation curve will be like this. So they are just these factors which are causing the rightward shift or the leftward shift is a very, very important for MCQ point of view. So you must know this. Rightward shift, rightward shift is seen in, seen in high carbon dioxide, high, P, uh, high hydrogen ion, low pH, and high 2, 3 BPG or DPG and reverse is true for the leftward shift. As far as temperature is concerned, more the temperature, more the temperature, rightward shift, lesser the temperature, leftward shift. So what they are asking you in this? What is the, uh, which is, what is going to shift to the left? So hypoxia means hypoxic condition, what happens? The oxygen pressure is low, carbon dioxide is rather more. And in hypoxia, what has happened, 2, 3 BPG will be produced more. And this will shift the curve to the right, not to the left. Acidosis means high hydrogen ion. Again, to the rightward, it will shift. Anemia also, it will shift it to the right. Body temperature high, it will shift to the right. Body temperature low, it will shift to the left. So what is going to shift to the left? Answer is going to be the D. Right. So you must know this picture. Right. Now coming to next question, enzyme affected in vitamin B12 deficiency is, just a second. Right. So what is, uh, which enzyme is affected in vitamin B12 deficiency? So you must know there are only two human enzymes which are needing vitamin B12 as a cofactor. They are methionine synthase otherwise called homocysteine methyl transferase and second enzyme is methyl malonyl CoA mutase enzyme. So methionine synthase is the answer in this question. Coming to question 13, diabetic patient presenting with polyuria, blood glucose is high. Which of the following is likely to occur in the, this patient of diabetes? So in diabetic patient, what is the problem? There is a lack of insulin. So what is going to happen? Protein synthesis will not increase because uh, protein synthesis is requiring insulin. It's an anabolic state. Glycogenesis also is an anabolic state needing insulin. Uh, cholesterol synthesis also needing insulin. So in lack of insulin, there will be a lot of fatty acid beta oxidation, which will produce a style CoE. So answer in 13 question is going to be C. 14 question. Respiratory question RQ in a patient on exclusively carbohydrate diet is going to be 1. So RQ is carbon dioxide produced divided by oxygen consumed for combustion of 1 gram of any particular food item. So if a person is taking carbohydrate, only carbohydrate RQ is going to be 1. You must know RQ for carbohydrate is 1 for protein. It's going to be 0.8 for lipid. It's going to be 0.7 for mixed diet. 
it is going to be 0.85. Coming to next question, fastest way to regenerate ATP during exercise is going to be creatine phosphate. Because glycolysis TCA cycle is going to take a little extra time. So in exercising muscle, if the ATP is required, once the available ATP in the cytosol is abolished, it's used up, the next comes the role of creatine phosphate, which is going to donate its phosphate to ADP converting ATP. So earliest production of ATP in the exercising muscle is seen via this mechanism only and this is creatine phosphate, which is known as phosphagen. The enzyme which is responsible for conversion of ADP to ATP by accepting the phosphate of creatine phosphate is the CPK, right? So the creatine phosphate is an available instant source of ATP in the exercising muscle. Okay, so this is the end of discussion. Thank you very much and wish you all the best.